Hey guys, this is Harrison Peacock, the electrician from CCS Triangle, working with the Honest Carpenter Show. In a recent video, you just saw us install a fluorescent light fixture, changing it to LED. Now we need to install a CL dimmer that is rated for LEDs so that we can control our brightness. As always, whenever we're working on any circuit, anything we're doing, we want to make sure we're finding the correct one. We're going to check it. See it again, we're working on kitchen circuit lights. Turning that off, and then we're going to go change this dimmer switch. So we're just taking this cover plate off here. Seeing as we've got a metal cover plate, we want to make sure that the switches we're working alongside are also grounded. Uh, with older switches, about 10 to 15 years old, they didn't actually have a ground wire attached to the switch itself. But as time's gone on and codes have been updated, we see things um, changed and improved. We want to make sure that the other switches we're working alongside are going to have grounds protecting them as well. Especially because we've got a metal cover plate on this one. So as we can see we're working here, there's been paint done right close to these switches. So we just want to line this out really slowly, really carefully. We don't want to push too hard because we'll slip and then damage the wall. Just going to test, test and make sure that everything is dead. And then my favorite test to do, a little bit of static known supply, I can see it works on electricity here, so when I test it here and it's not flashing, I know there's no power there. So we can see here that the wires are actually quite short and they're not moving as well, giving us enough space. So we're just gonna open up this next switch so we've got a bit more movement to put the dimmer switch in. It's a lot larger and it's gonna need more space, so we're gonna have to play about with these wires to get it installed correctly. Now at some point, this switch had backstabbing installed and it was changed over. We can see backstabbing there because these wires are poking out. These are actually, would be live. So you've got these bare bits of copper here sticking out on this old switch. It's a good thing we're changing it over because this is not a good condition to have them in while they're poking out. Although we do have the correct terminations that we wanna see. We can see we've got a ground wire attached, which is good. I'm gonna disconnect this as well. So as we open this up, we're gonna see here, inside the box, we've got one wire nut. This wire nut is gonna attach to our ground wire. It always comes with that one? It certainly does. This type of uh, dimmer switch that we have here does. I'm just gonna straighten this out so it's a bit better. We want to make sure there's not too much paint because paint is going to obstruct our movement. So we're just going to clean it up a little bit so we can attach this. Yeah. Now, as you can see, the dimmer switch itself it's a lot larger than previously the switch we had installed. So when we're installing this, we wanna make sure that we've given ourselves lots of space in the box, that our wire nuts here are clear, that we've got them pushed out of the way. There's not anything obstructing it. We wanna especially make sure that this bare ground wire has a good path out of the way, because if for any reason it accidentally touches one of our screws when we reinstall it, that's gonna create a dead short and then our circuit breaker is gonna start tripping. So it's really important that we have this out of the way when we install it back in. If you're unsure of how to do this, it comes with instructions in it that will tell you if you're doing a two-way or a three-way wire. We're doing a two-way switch today. We're gonna to keep it nice and simple. We might do a class on three-way later, which gets a little bit more complicated is actually one of the most common issues that electricians get called out for DIYs when they try and do the switches themselves. As we can see here, this screw is darker than these screws. This is our common. This is where our power is gonna come from. Generally, if you take one look, 
you can see here with our two wires that this is our main power. This is where it's all coming in and going out. So we see the larger one here. We're going to take this wire that is attached to that wire nut and we're going to attach it to the darker colored screw. We're going to make sure it's wrapped around correctly so that when we tighten this screw, they actually pulls and twists the wire in. If we wrap it the wrong way, it will loosen and fall off. Every single connection in a circuit is a weak point. We want to make sure any time we do anything, that it is tight as we can possibly get it without over-screwing and tearing the thread. There is such a thing as screwing it too tight. We want to make sure we don't do that. Now, as you can see on this dimmer switch, it has two more screws. We only need to use one for this particular installation, and we're going to go the direct opposite to here. This is our switch live. This is what's going to go to the light to turn it on. I'm just going to wrap this round. I potentially could have restripped these. They didn't look like they were in too bad a condition. If it looks like there's damage or if it looks like there's too much bare copper exposed, then you definitely want to strip it and start again. But I was happy with the condition of the wires for this particular dimmer switch. You see on the last turn as we did that, it actually pulled the wire in and made sure it stayed tight. Just gonna confirm it with our screwdriver. That's good. Now is the very important part. As we're getting all these wires in, we know we've got wire nuts here, we know we've got ground wires here, and we have to make sure that these ground wires do not touch anything. This isn't a particularly neat box, but it is what we're working with. So again, as we're installing these switches, we're just gonna put kinks and bends in the wires so that they move easier to give us more space. We're gonna reinstall the middle switch that we took out. And then we're gonna check the space in between these two switches. We're just gonna check this ground wire and make sure that it's not touching the switch adjacent to it and that the ground wires are out of the way. I'm using my flathead to move the wire without pushing too hard because <clears throat> I don't want to damage the copper and weaken its integrity. As I'm screwing this in, I have slight gaps either side so it has some movement to make it level and also to get the spaces correct between each of the switches for when we reinstall that plate. Now we're going to push these last wires in. We want to make sure if we do have wire nuts in our space that they're pushed right at the back so that this dimmer switch has enough space to sit comfortably. We also see these latches here. These are fine if there's no other dimmer switches next to them. If we install three in a row, we will need to remove these latches with pliers or cutters, whatever we have available. And as we can see on the actual switch, it says up there. So it's telling you which way to install it. And as I'm doing this, I'm doing it quite slow. I don't want to push too hard. I want to make sure as I'm doing it, I don't feel any wires being pinched or crushed. That as I'm screwing it, the screws are moving comfortably. If they start looking like they're not going forward or in, that's because something's being crushed, something's in the way, and you haven't given yourself enough space. So if it doesn't feel like it's moving comfortably and you're really having to force it, then you want to unscrew it, readjust the box at the back, and then try again. We want to screw it so it's, re it's, it's very tight. We don't want to over screw it so it's too tight. We want a little bit of movement, just a touch, because when we put the plate on, they're going to be slightly out. The plate is going to need to move them a little bit. And then when you put that plate on and do your final screws, it's going to hold it all in place. Now at this point, we're going to go and turn on, make sure it's all working correctly before we put our final plate on. And we turn on for the dimmer switch. As we turn it on, because it's dimmed so low, there is actually no light. So make sure if you turn it on and there isn't any light, you don't forget to turn the dimmer switch up. <laughs> so don't assume just because it didn't come on straight away that it's a problem. Make sure that the dimmer is actually turned up. <laughs> and then we're just going to clean it and make it look a lot neater. There's a little bit of paint on this, but yeah. the neater we can make it, the better. Spraying. So guys, that's been how to change a regular two-way switch for a dimmer switch rated with LED. 
This has been Harrison Peacock with CCS Triangle, your electrician uh, on the Honest Carpenter Show. See you next time.